Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. And during today's show, we're talking a little bit about a general principle of how to not lose, how to make money by focusing on how to not lose money. So many people enter into um, the investing world really with a lack of knowledge or lack of understanding of how things work. And they're out there and they're focused on making money and they lose sight of some of the basic principles. And, and I would suggest to you that the first thing when going into an investment program is understand what you're investing on and understand how you can lose money and focus on how to not lose money when investing. And as I said in the first segment, we're not talking about people that are you know, scared of their own shadow or that you know, want to put it all under the mattress or bury it in the backyard. We're people talking about people that at least have a vague understanding that, that there's something better out there, that they can earn a reasonable rate of return on their capital, uh, and that they can do better than just sticking it in a savings account. And that's what we're talking about. But the individual investor, because of the lack of knowledge and understanding, uh, they typically do far worse than the indexes. And so we're talking about some of the, the reasons that they do and some of the ways to uh, combat, combat that. And one of the biggest errors I see is people that are trying to, to time the markets and they end up missing out on a lot of the benefit. Now, there are certain um, trading programs and there are certain managers that have shown in the past an ability to do that, and I don't dispute that. If you look at, um, in fact, we were able to do it in 2008, very successfully avoid a lot of the downturn. But I don't, I don't really promote that because in the future I don't know if that's going to happen again. And we did it mostly as a risk reduction, not necessarily to make make more money. It was just people were overly concerned, and that was somewhat unusual. But on on a typical basis, if you look at uh, the ups and downs in the market, that having a, an investment strategy that takes advantage of those by selling high and buying low rather than selling low and buying high will help your return significantly over the years. And so we see one of the problems with people is what I call overconfidence. People are way too overconfident in their ability, in their investing abilities. The, the number of extremely intelligent people, the number of uh, computer programs and things that are out in the global marketplace investing is just phenomenal. And even for the top tier, you know, someone that has all the certification, I'm a chartered financial analyst, a CFA, which is essentially a PhD in investing. Um, you know, people with CFAs that manage billions of dollars and MBAs from Harvard and PhDs from MIT and, you know, computers that are, um, you know, practically supercomputers crunching numbers and data. That's what you're competing with. And people have this overconfidence. And I especially see it in people that are looking back at historical patterns. Now, I'm a big proponent of studying market history. Uh, but for the general rules, we talked a couple weeks ago about um, the stock jobbers in, in England and how they were able to reconstruct stock trading from the 15 and 1600s and how certain things have not changed in people's overconfidence and people being undiversified. And so there are lessons to be learned from history. What I'm talking about is people that apply a very specific time frame. And the number one thing I see is people analyzing the returns of the U.S. stock market from 1926 to today and they run all these testing and data on that. It's a very unique time period in history. You see uh, what was an emerging market in the 1800s, the United States, sort of come into its own in the 1920s and move into a developed country to a superpower status, to the only superpower status in the world, really um, a status that the, the world had not seen before. And so to take the history of that and World War One and World War Two and, you know, recessions and, you know, tech and the invention of the microchip and all these different things and extrapolate that into the future, A, for the United States or B, for another country, is just not realistic. Once again, there are things to be learned, but this overconfidence when people say that they have the answer, it's a huge, huge problem. And 
What I've seen is the more educated an investor, the more sophisticated an investor, a lot of times it becomes much more difficult to get that person because simply they think they know too much. And something that we battle in our office all the time, and I'm constantly going back to the basics and being humble enough to know that the more that I, that I learn, the more that I study, the more I realize how much we don't know and that there's certain basic principles to be followed to make money. And one of them is being diversified, not trying to pick the individual stocks, but using the, the safety of diversification to help you with your returns. Once again, focusing on how to not lose money. Um, another thing that um, we look at on, on that same principle is not becoming overconfident, not becoming wed to the securities that you have. A lot of times people say, well, you know, I bought this stock and it was a good company and, and they just refuse to adjust uh, their thinking on that. They become overconfident, they become wedded to their decision, they refuse to admit, admit mistakes. Um, and so one way to combat this is simply, you know, slowing down, turning off CNBC, focusing on a, having a plan, a strategic plan. A lot of individual investors come in and they've got investments over here and they've got investments over here and they have no comprehensive plan as far as where they're going. Every investor, whether you're doing it yourself or you have an advisor, should have an investment policy statement that anchors what you're trying to accomplish. You know, if you set out a plan and you need to have, say, 70% uh, growth assets in your portfolio to reach where you're going, you know, you can certainly move around, you know, 80%, 60%. I'm not saying you have to keep it exactly on that number, but you shouldn't wake up one day and all of a sudden go to 0% growth assets because you just know what's going to happen, that the fiscal cliff you, you know is going to collapse the market or the downgrade of the U.S debt you know is going to collapse the market because people simply don't have that knowledge. There's way, way too many variables. Well, I could go on and on about this topic, and in fact, maybe next week we'll continue talking about it. But in the meantime, I want you to think about that when you're out there with your portfolios. Don't become so focused on the latest hot investment that makes money. Spend some time thinking about not losing money in your investments, and what are some steps that you can take to, to prevent yourself from making a disastrous mistake and ruining your financial future. Well, for all things money, I'm your host, David Blaine. That's all the time that we have for today. I hope you enjoyed the show and that you'll join us again next week. The proceeding was a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media.